Hello, my dear students. I welcome you all to the Science Nest YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to explain you the inheritance lesson, lesson number 20, grade 10, the most important lesson for your all level exam. We will start the lesson. Under this lesson, we have to learn about the diversity among organisms. Diversity among organisms. Then, uh, you can see one species can be classified, identified separately from one another species because of their inherited features. Inherited features means the features that transmit from one generation to the next generation. Those are the inherited features. Then, one species can be identified separately from one another species because of these inherited features. Then, although there are common characteristics for, uh, for a species, all the organisms belong to a single species are not similar. As humans also, there are different uh, face cuts of for the humans humans different uh, characteristics are there for the different humans there are common things but they all are not same they are different and we'll see the common inherited characteristics in human population that are uh, transferring from one generation to the next generation you can see curly and straight here at the exam they're asking the common inherited characteristics they are common things not real things, curly and straight hair. They are coming from their parents. And fused or free earlobes, like in the picture, this is the fused earlobe. This is the fused earlobe. This one is the free earlobes. And ability to fold the tongue like this. Some can't do that. And position of the thumb when the fingers are crossed like this. So here the position is... Like this, the position is like this. And dimpled and normal cheeks, those are common uh, characteristics. This is another one, straight and curved thumb. Some people have the cur curved thumb, some have straight thumb. And widow's peak on forehead like this. This is the widow's peak in uh, some people's forehead. We can see this widow's peak. Some have not got that. Then, most of the mother's and father's characteristics have passed to the next generations. But you may have found new characteristics in your brother, sister or any other relative which is not found in any relative then. If you further study previous generations, you may find that particular characteristics in them. That is why those people also have those things because the previous generations had them. That's why. It is clear that inherited characteristics may pass uh, evading from one generation to the next. These are very important. Some rare inherited characteristics like uh, syndactility. Syndactility, you can see the difference in the toes. And polydactility, there are more toes in hand and the legs. And albinism, you can see all the features here uh, eyelashes all are white color that is albinism brown or blue eyes you can see eye color they are rare characteristics that are passing from one generation to the next generation according to the uh, collected information of nature of complexion ears teeth food wings skin pattern beak and inherited characteristics taste of food color of flowers Nature of pots and seeds and height of plants are also inherited characteristics. The first person to the study about the inherited characteristics is Austrian uh, priest and a science graduate called Gregor Mendel. And he is honored as the father of genetics also. He is the father of genetics. We will see the Mendel's experiments about inheritance. Uh, he used garden pea plant to do these experiments. The uh, scientific name is Pisum sativum. sativum. Uh, then uh, you should know what is the reason that why he selected this garden pea plant for his experiments. 
We'll see what are the reasons according to your textbook. Can be easily grown. That is one thing. Can be easily grown. We can uh, grow them easily and can obtain the yield within a short time period and can obtain pure breeding plants. That means the selected characteristics are not changing for many generations. That is why we call them as pure breeding plants. Naturally self-pollinating when necessary. Cross-pollination is also possible. Self-pollination means the pollens of the same flower is depositing on the same uh, stigma of that same flower that is self-pollination normally it is happening but if we want we can do cross-pollination that means we can deposit the pollens of one flower pollens of one flower on another stigma or a flower of another plant or flower of this that plant but uh, another flower not in the same flower that is the cross-pollination Ability to obtain offsprings by breeding and can continue the generations. And he observed seven uh, contrasting characters, characters and tested one character at a time. Uh, that part is not a feature of that. Uh, those are the reasons you should remember as the reasons that why he uh, selected this. Uh, garden pea plant to do these experiments. Those uh, five features are there. Let's see the other part of the knot. Uh, he observed uh, seven contrasting characters and test one and uh, one character at a time. We'll see what are the contrasting characters characters that he uh, observed in those plants. One is color of the flower. Uh, he observed there are two colors. Uh, the one flower, one type of flowers have purple color and some are white color. And, and he observed the color of seed also. Some are yellow color, some are green color. Shape of seed, round or wrinkled. Shape of pod, inflated or constricted. Color of pod, green or yellow. Position of flower, axial or terminal or height of the plant, tall or short. These are the seven contrasting characters uh, he has observed. And uh, you should remember those characters. No need to remember all the characters. Uh, five from them is enough or five or three. That's enough. So remember some characters. They are very easy to remember. You see the procedure of this experiment. Cultivation of pure breeding tall and short plants. First. He cultivated pure breeding, tall and short plants. One generation is tall, one generation is short. This parental generation was known as the P. That is the symbol for that generation. Then pollens of tall plants are deposited on stigma of short plants. So that means a uh, breed between tall and short plants and vice versa. That means Pollens of short plants were deposited on stigma of tall plants, likewise. You can obtain new seeds by cross-pollination and plant them to obtain the next generation. After that, uh, those seeds that are, were coming from that, uh, after that pollination, were planted to take a new generation. And that generation has named as F1 generation. In, uh, allow that F1 generation to take place the self-pollination. Self-pollination means only uh, in, inside these flower in the same flower, the pollination had occurred and new generation, another new generation uh, were obtained. Then the resultant seeds were planted to obtain the F2 generation. The tall to short plant ratio was 3 to 1. That is the uh, that is the result that he took from that experiment. We we'll see that experiment. Uh, 
after he did that experiment, uh, he took the ratio to tall to short plant as 3 to 1. We'll see how to do and how to take it after uh, looking at this. According to the Mendel's opinion, the tall character was dominant and short was recessive. Dominant and recessive. Dominant means uh, we can see it uh, very it's major one. Major character is that dominant one. Recessive one is the minor character. You can see there's uh, three tall plants and one uh, short plants. So the major character is the tall. So we can tell the tall character was dominant and short was recessive. And you can see in the F1 generation, in the F1 generation, also all the plants are tall. That is why we can tell the tall is the dominant character. Because in F1 generation, there is no any short plant. So the uh, dominant character can see in the F1 generation also. That is one way of identifying the dominant and recessive character. The feature which was recessive in F1 generation reappear in F2 generation. Uh, it was an important, it was an important observation. As Mendel used a single pair of contrasting characters at a time, it, it was known as monohybrid cross. You should remember this part. What is the monohybrid cross? Uh, use single pair of contrasting characters at a time. He had not used all the seven characters at the same time. He has used only single pair at one time. We call it as monohybrid cross. It is the monohybrid cross. The results obtained from the Mendel monohybrid cross using seven different characters are there. As I show you, uh, always for all the characters, the ratio is three to one. And see how he took that. It is clear that all of our characters are inherited in the same manner. One feature is completely hidden in F1 generation and it reappears in F2 generation again. In all these uh, monohybrid crosses, it is like that short and tall feature. Uh, one character is completely hidden in F1 generation, again reappear in F2 generation. And that feature is the recessive feature. In both generations, all the plants were with the features of P generation. No P plants were with intermediate characters. No any intermediate characters for the P plants. And Mendel assumed that it was because two different factors determine a single character. That is the thing, uh, important thing that Mendel assumed while doing those experiments. Two different factors. Factors, this word is Mendel's word, factors, two different factors determine a single character always. In genetics, symbols are used to denote those factors. We are using uh, symbols for them. The standard is that the dominant factor should denote by, denote by a capital letter and the recessive factor should show by a simple letter. Accordingly, we'll see how it is inheriting. You can see for tall feature, we are taking capital T. And for short feature, we are taking simple T. Then for each feature, we will see how we are taking those factors. I told to each feature, there are two factors to determine that feature or characteristic. Then pure breeding tall plants can show by capital T, capital T. Two factors are there. And pure breeding short plants can show by simple T, simple T. And the tall plants with recessive short feature, that's the recessive short feature. In the next generation, we can see the tall uh, plants if they are interbreed. That means if they do the self pollination between these gener these character these uh, plants, then in the next generation we can see the short plants also. Then this is the way of uh, symbolizing the tall plants with recessive short fish. Anyway, 
uh, when we are looking this from outside, we can see this plant as a tall one. But there's the hidden short feature also. It's a hidden one. We can't see it. Then we'll see when two factors are similar, they are known as homozygous. Very important. The two factors are similar like capital T, capital T, simple T, simple T. We call them as homozygous. So homozygous. And when the factors are not similar like this, capital T, simple T, then we call it as heterozygous. The monohybrid cross of pea plant, considering tall and short character, can be expressed using symbols like this. We will see how to do that monohybrid cross. Punnett square, which was introduced by a scientist called Punnett, can be used to show the occurrence of F2 generation. We are using Punnett diagrams because it was found by Punnett, a uh, scientist called Punnett. That's why we are naming like that. We will see how to find uh, factors in all, all the generations. Uh, this is the P generation, parent generation. It has tall and short plants, capital T, capital T for tall plants because they are pure breeding tall plants and they are pure breeding short plants. And from that, we have to take the gamete out only capital T are there and from this also we can say uh, take simple T gamete and we have to mix them together breed them together then we can take capital T simple T in the uh, F1 generation plants capital T simple T we can see them as tall plants that means F1 generation is totally tall and we have to breed it with another tall plant in that F1 generation after that we will see what are the gametes in that here capital T and simple T both gametes are there here also capital T simple T both gametes then we will breed between them those gametes we will combine them capital T, capital T. Then one is capital T, capital T. From this, with this one, with this simple T, capital T, simple T, capital T, simple T again, simple T to simple T. This is the F2 generation. You can see there are three tall plants and one short plant. That is why we are telling the ratio as three to one. Three to one is the ratio. From a Punnett diagram also, we can represent it like that. No need to draw at the exam. You have to draw only this diagram and show the gametes separately in each box. And you have to combine them together. Capital T, capital T, capital T, simple T, capital T, simple T, simple T, simple T. These are the four types of plants we can obtain in F2 generation. You also, we took that the same result can be taken by both methods. You can use any method that you you're familiar with. Now we will see the basic concepts of genetics. Uh, gene concepts about inheritance. Genes. Now a new word is there. Mendel said that the features of an organism is determined by a special particular factors. The identified particular factor is named as genes later. We are not telling a factor now. We are telling them as genes. In gene concept, as a standard, uh, the dominant feature is denoted by a capital letter and the recessive by a simple letter. Uh, we will see the examples on. We, we did that in the previous part, how to denote uh, each thing. Like this homozygous situation, we are representing from capital R, capital R, or simple R, simple R. Heterozygous situation, capital R, simple R. We will see what, uh, the meanings of each word, gene expression. The combination of a gene pair for a particular character is known as gene expression. You should remember these definitions. The combination of a gene pair for a particular character like this capital R simple R anyway from these combinations different characters are representing that combination is the gene expression now we'll see phenotype and genotype 
the feature that externally appear is the phenotype. In capital R simple, capital T simple, T, we call it as a tall plant. That is the feature that externally appear. Tall is the phenotype. And uh, we will say the gene composition to determine that feature is known as genotype. That means if we represent it as capital T simple T, it is the genotype. Phenotype is tall. Genotype is capital T simple T. In capital R, capital T, capital T also, capital T, capital T is the genotype. Tall is the phenotype. And if they are simple T, simple T, Simple T, simple T is the genotype and short is the phenotype. The externally appearing character is the phenotype. Gene composition is the genotype. Let's see nature of genetic materials and genes. Then the double helix structure of DNA was first discovered by two scientists named as Watson and Crick. You should remember the name of that those two scientists the feature of organisms are determined by the sequence of base pairs in those dna there are the base pairs uh, the characters are determined the features are determined by these base pairs in dna you can see these are the base pairs base pairs in dna this is the double helix structure of dna from the base pairs, the features are determined. Gene is a specific segment of a DNA for a particular character. The gene is only specific uh, segment, only a segment, only a part of a DNA is the gene. One part only, it's a gene. So in one DNA, there are so many genes. Genes that determine the large number of features in an organism and transmit them from generation to the next gen next are present in chromosomes. Present in the genes that determine large number of features in an organism and transmit them from generation to the next generation are present in chromosomes. Each gene has a particular location in a chromosome. I'll show how the way of the chromosome. Chromosome is this kind of uh, structure. They are inside the nucleus of the cells and in those chromosomes, in these strands, there are the DNA. In the strands, there are the DNA. DNA are in the strands of the chromosome. I told that one part of a DNA is a gene. So, genes are present in these chromosomes. The parts of DNA are the genes. So, genes are present in chromosomes. That is the thing explained here. We see the homologous chromosomes. It is also another important thing. A pair of chromosomes, as I drew, it is one chromosome. A pair of chromosomes that are arranged at the same sequence of characters. Like this pair. This is one chromosome. Another chromosome. They are same size. The length of the strands also same and the uh, same characteristics have arranged as a sequence as together they have arranged together in both chromosomes they are same in length width and the location of the centromere centromere is the, this mid circle that is the centromere of the chromosome an organism receives these homologous chromosomes from its parents, one from mother and the other from father. There are two chromosomes. They are the homologous chromosomes. One has received from mother, one has received from father. A pair of genes that determine a particular character are present in complementary locations of homologous chromosomes. Complementary means 
that means if this part is expressing the uh, white color of a person this part also expressing the white color if this part is expressing the curly hair this part also expressing the curly hair right because complementary locations are there for each character it is clear in Mendel's experiments that during gamete formation, these genes independently segregate. Now we saw that these genes have independently segregated both uh, different cells while the uh, gametes are forming. When gametes are forming, one is going to, uh, one is, both uh, two uh, genes are independently separating. That is independently segregating. Next on gene linkage, a scientist called Morgan also uh, did experiments about genetics. He got unexpected phenotype, uh, phenotypic ratios and found, uh, found out that the genes do not segregate always independent. But uh, Mendel told that the genes have segregated independently without uh, linking with any other things. But the Morgan told that they do not segregate always independently. The genes that present in the same chromosome, which are not segregated independently, are known as linked genes. They are not segregating independently. We call them as linked genes. And Morgan discovered the gene linkage. You should remember the name Morgan with the process linked genes, the linked gene word. Let's see, heredity of human. Transmission of inherited characters to generation to known as heredity is known as heredity. The process by which those characters transmit, that process is the inheritance, the name of our lesson. The process of transferring the inherited characters is the inheritance. The behavior of chromosomes during sex determination of human is discussed under inheritance. Even though the chromosomes in a nucleus of a cell, you know, the inside the nucleus there are the chromosomes. In the sixth lesson, you saw that while doing the things inside the cell, Inside the nucleus, there are the chromosomes. Even though the chromosomes in a nucleus of a cell are different in shape and size, the number of them is constant for a species. In different species, they have the constant number of chromosomes. It is a unique feature for a species. We can identify any species by counting the number of chromosomes inside their nucleus. It is a unique characteristic. It's only in the inside them, not in other species. We will see some organisms with the number of chromosomes inside their nuclei. You should remember these numbers. E. coli bacteria, there's only one chromosome inside that one, one nucleus. Garden pea. 14, onion, 16, maize, badeiringu, 20, tomato, 24, paddy also 24, horse, 33, uh, mouse, 40, human, 46, chimpanzees, 48, uh, calf, 100, 104. Next determination of human is the next part. Uh, incident of determining the gender is called sex determination. There are 26 chromosomes in humans and those 20, uh, 46 can be seen as 23 pairs. Like in this picture, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes in humans. Out of those 23 pairs, 22 pairs are known as autosomal chromosomes and the other pair, the remaining pair is the sex chromosomes. This one you can see the 22 are autosomal chromosomes but this one is known as the sex chromosome. This is for a female and this is this chromosome uh, 
selection is for a male. Two sex chromosomes of a female are similar in structure and shape. They are known as X chromosomes. Like in this female has XX chromosomes, two X chromosomes. Then the sex chromosomes of a male are different from each other. Like here, they're different. So one is X, the large one is X, the small, uh, short one is Y. Y chromosome is smaller than X. The X chromosome of a male is similar to the X chromosome of female. Both are same. Uh, during formation of an egg from an egg mother cell, and sperms from sperm mother cell, the pair of sex chromosomes separate. When formation of the gametes, that means male gametes, they are the sperms. When formation of the female gametes, they are the eggs. Then these pair of chromosomes are separating. We will see how they are separating. A sperm contains 22 autosomal chromosomes and only a single uh, sex chromosome. An egg possess only a X chromosome and a sperm contain X or a Y chromosome. When an egg gets fertilized with an sperm with a sperm, there may be two X chromosomes and X and a Y chromosome in the zygote. We will see how it is happening. A zygote with two chromosome produces a girl. And X and Y chromosome produce a boy. Accordingly, the factor that needs to determine a boy is received from father and not from mother. Because boy is determining by X and Y chromosomes. This Y chromosome can be obtained only from a sperm. That means from a father. Like in this diagram, this is the egg mother cell. It has uh, XX and in a sperm mother cell it has X and Y chromosomes and they are segregating uh, to eggs like this X and X here to sperms like X and Y when they are combining together XX, XY, XX again and XY again then you can see there are two females and two males 50-50 percentages are there for females and males. You should know how to draw this at the exam. Now we will see the next topic of the lesson, human inherited disorders. Genetic disorders due to sex-linked inheritance. And we are going to uh, look at this topic under two categories. One is the genetic disorders due to sex linked inheritance and the other part is gene mutations and related disorders the disorders because of the gene mutation is the next part you see even though x and y chromosomes determine the human sex all the genes present on on those sex chromosomes are not used in determination of sex most of the genes on X and Y chromosomes determine other features as autosomal chromosomes. As Y chromosome is shorter than X chromosome, most of the genes complementary for X are absent in Y. Complementary means in, uh, if there are some uh, chromosome, uh, some genes in X, they are not present in Y chromosome. Accordingly, in males, for most of the X-linked genes, there are no complementary genes in Y. Therefore, most of the genes in X, whether they are dominant or recessive, they are phenotypically express, expressed in males, but as females possess a pair of X chromosomes, X-linked genes are paired. They phenotypically express a recessive character only when they are present as double recessive gene. We will see how it is happening by looking at the age diagram then you can understand it uh, hemophilia is one type of sex linked inherited disorder we'll see how it is inheriting uh, this is the carrier mother that means uh, if we are uh, representing the hemophilia disease by h letter uh, if there's capital h that means it is 
uh, it, uh, he or she is uh, healthy if they are simple less that means he or she is a deceased person if both are capital less that is that means uh, he or she is healthy if both are simple less or one is one is simple h in the uh, male because on the on the x chromosome there are the sex link chromos sex link uh, chromosomes are there only with the x chromosome so if there is simple h in the this x chromosome also that means that male is a deceased one and uh, if there is uh, Capital H and simple H both in females. That means uh, that female is a carrier. That means uh, he she can uh, transmit the disease to the next generation. We can't see we, uh, that uh, female is not deceased one. That means the disease is not appearing in her, but uh, she can transmit that disease to the next generation as a carrier. Then we will see how the gametes are forming here. They are separating. They are also separating. Then they are combining together. Then you can see capital H, capital H. Again, capital H and Y. Simple H and cap simple, capital H. Simple H and Y. Then you can see this one is healthy because both are capital here also healthy because the single X chromosome is there. It is capital son, healthy son. This one is a carrier daughter. You can see capital H, simple H, both are there. Here, deceased son because they are simple H on the X chromosome. We are representing simple H recessive gene for hemophilia and capital H for dominant gene of the recessive gene of for hemophilia that is the dominant gene hemophilia which occurs due to a x-linked recessive gene only present in males in the population hemophilia which occurs due to x-linked recessive gene only present in males in the population you can see only the males are the deceased person here only the males are the deceased person when a wound or cut occurs, it is essential to clot blood. At that time, when a blood clot is formed, it stops excessive bleeding. Hemophilia for patients, blood does not clot. That is the symptom of this disease. Blood does not clot. Therefore, they die because of bleeding. The males are suffering from this. They die because of bleeding. Females act as the carrier for this disease. They are not uh, deceased person. Only the males are suffering from this disease. Now the color blindness. We, we call it as red green color blindness. The reason for this disease is a recessive gene in X chromosome. Here also you should re, uh, you should uh, remember that hemophilia occurred due to X linked recessive gene. X linked recessive gene. If they are simple H in X, then that is the uh, diseased one. So you should re remember the reason to occur this disease is genetic re reason is X-linked recessive gene. Here also color blindness, recessive gene in X chromosome. It also X-linked recessive gene like the hemophilia. The sufferer cannot distinguish red color from green color. They can't separately identify the red and green color. This is common among males, rarely occur in females. Common among males, rarely in females. When a colorblind female is married to a healthy male, the inheritance of colorblindness is given here. I'll show you. The chance to show the sex linked inheritance diseases in females is low. The chance of getting those diseases in female children is high if they are married to blood relatives. This disease is high if they are married to blood relatives. The reason for that is the female that joined the family is most probably a carrier. That's why you can see how it is inheriting. Here simple C is the recessive gene for color blindness. If simple C is there, 
that means that person uh, is a deceased one and the dominant gene of recessive gene uh, dominant gene is capital C. If they are capital C, that means uh, it is, he or she is a healthy one. And also it can see linked with the X chromosome always. Here they are simple C, simple C in two X chromosomes. That means it, she is a female and deceased female. The, uh, he, you can see there is a healthy father with capital C in X chromosome. Then the genes are separating. Here the chromosomes are separating to the gametes. And they are combining together to form carrier daughter here with capital C, simple C. And also they are combining to form XY and simple C is here, a deceased son. And capital C, simple C again, carrier daughter and the deceased son. Those are the uh, new generation occurred because of the marriage between those two persons. You should know how to represent those things by these kind of diagrams at the exam. Next one, gene mutations and related disorders. They are happening because of gene mutations, not because of the sex-linked uh, genes. Due to change in DNA of a chromosome, the mutations occur in a single gene are known as gene mutation. Mutations means changes. Changes occur in the cro uh, chromosomes because of the changes in DNA. When a naturally active gene is muted, it gets inherited. If one uh, gene is muted like this, mutated like this, uh, it is inheriting to the next generation also. One disease causing like this is albinism. This disorder occurred due to a mutation of the gene, uh, gene that is responsible for the production of melanin pigment in an autosomal chromosome, not in the sex chromosome, uh, that is in autosomal chromosome, in, the, in one autosomal chromosome. They are the gene responsible for the melanin pigment uh, production. Then if it is muted, muted or it is mutated, then this disorder is occurring. The feature of this disorder are the abnormal uh, white color of skin. Features are abnormal white color of skin. They are an eyelashes. And albinism occurs when gene is present as recessive homozygous condition. If the gene is like in recessive homozygous condition, that means we will consider the recessive gene is simple A. And if one, uh, if there is the character, uh, if there is character albinism, uh, he he got the chromosomes like simple. A simple A recessive homocyte simple A simple A both are simple not only human but also animals also albino like in the picture there are uh, there's a peacock with albinism and a human also next disease is thalassemia this is a condition that occurred due to a mutation in a gene responsible for the production of hemoglobin Production of hemoglobin. Then hemoglobin is a protein, a protein uh, that acts as a carrier for oxygen transportation. Uh, oxygen transportation is doing by combining the oxygen with hemoglobin. And due to the reduction of hemoglobin production in thalassemic patients, the main symptom is anemia. Anemia means a uh, lack of blood. Lack of blood, that means no hemoglobin in blood. It is a red color pig pigment, that is why the blood is red color. Homozygous recessive genes are the things that are responsible for this disease also. Homozygous recessive condition is the diseased condition like simple T, simple T. And heterozygous condition is the carrier like in the previous two diseases, previous diseases we discussed. 
there are several areas in Sri Lanka with higher number of thalassemic patients. The reason for that may be the marriage between blood relatives. That is the reason for the thalassemia, marriage between blood relatives. That is, this is the last part of the lesson, application of knowledge of inheritance. One application is to improve the quality of animals. There are so many examples in your textbook. You can read them and I understand very easily. To improve quality of animals is one application. You can see cows that can produce higher volume of milk and hence that produce large number of eggs, chicken with higher growth rate. Uh, those are the improvements in animals and hybrid plants and animals. It was first applied among some wheat cultivators in uh, America. The economy was developed as they used improved wheat varieties. Now in Sri Lanka, crop research centers are breeding centers and breeding centers have achieved a considerable development in gene technology. Large sized fruit or vegetables include uh, grains and livestock are there by this gene technology. You can see the genetic engineering. New technology is being here is being used to produce a recombinant DNA molecule, recombinant, which is formed by combining DNA fragments of different sources. Fragments means parts. DNA parts are taken from different sources and combining together. Those are the recombinant DNAs. This field is known as recombinant DNA technology. This field is highly popularized uh, as genetic engineering or gene technology, that is the most popular word for this technology, gene, genetic engineering or gene technology. The genotype of an organism can be altered by moving or adding extra DNA fragments into the genome. Genome means the total amount of genes in, a, uh, in an organism, that is the genome. To that genome, we are adding extra DNA fragments. Uh, that is how we are uh, changing the genotype of an organism. We see the applications of genetic engineering in uh, food and agricultural field. Production of high productive plants and animals. Here are the examples. We decide resistant crops, pest resistant crops, rice enriched with vitamin uh, A, we call it as golden rice. You should know to make the golden rice a uh, gene from a bacteria is taking and it is inserting into the paddy plant. Likewise, and a tomato resistant to cold water, it, uh, that, the, uh, those genes were taken from fish li living in mud of cold countries likewise the genes are taking from one organism and inserting it to another to make those things and high productive cattle and milk with high nutritious values those are the fields we are using them in industrial field we use production of enzymes such as amylase and production of some amino acids and production of vitamins you should remember those amino acids and those vitamins also. As a remedy to the pollution by fossil fuel combustion and other waste material. In medical field, we are using gene technology in large scale in the production of insulin by using the uh, E. coli bacteria and production of proteins including growth hormones, use of development, developed bacteria and fungi in production of antibiotics, and insertion of genes that is responsible for the formation of arteries in the embryo into patients with artery blockages, and replacement of the disease gene by a healthy gene, very important thing, it's gene therapy, 
and use of DNA technology is to confirm to the identity of a person in forensic medicine for the identification of a criminal blood sample, semen, hair or DNA of any other part of the body obtained from a site of crime are used. Identification of the criminal by checking the compatibility of the DNA of those samples in the suspect's DNA. Very important fields are there. Very, very important applications are there in the medical field. Okay, this is the end of today's lesson. Thank you for watching. Subscribe the channel to watch more videos like this.